Hello there, wary traveler. I see you've made it this far into Paleo Rewind 2021. Who am I, you might ask? Alright, I need to stop it. Greetings! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's David, aka Spina Dude, back for another Paleo Rewind. Big thanks to Edge for asking me to be a part of this again. And let's just dive into the second half of May 2021, because we've got some pretty epic stuff to cover. We're kicking things off with a bit of a banger here. A 180 million year old fossil from the early Jurassic seems to have captured three levels of an ancient food chain at work. Uncovered from an abandoned quarry in Germany, the Slabo Rock contains the Decopod Proarion, which is entangled in the tentacles of the Bolemnite Palasotuthis, which in turn seems to have evidence of predation damage from a larger vertebrate predator, possibly the early Jurassic shark Hybotus. A pretty cool find if you ask me. Makes me wonder if they kept digging if they would have found a pliosaur munching on the shark or something. Imagine if it just kept going layers and layers deeper. Moving right along, North America's earliest known side-necked turtle, dubbed Pleurochaya appalachius, was unearthed in Texas. The remains date back approximately 96 million years, predating the previous record holder, Piutemus tibert. Well, what is a side-necked turtle, some of you may be wondering? Unlike other turtles that retract their heads directly into their shells, side-necks bend their necks horizontally against their body and are typically further protected by a large overhanging shell. The group originated down south in Gondwana and began migrating northwards during the early Cretaceous. And so far, Pleurochaya is the earliest known side neck from North America, dating back to the Cenomanian of the late Cretaceous. Man, I think that's the most times I've ever said neck in one video. In other news, a new study reveals that Eurasian horses diverged from North American horses a million years ago. The Cabaline horse lineage, which contains domestic horses, spread into Eurasia about one million years ago. And with this first detailed look at horse genetics, it was found that there were at the very least two separate periods where the horses moved back and forth between the continents and interbred. This resulted in Eurasian horses obtaining North American horse DNA and vice versa. I don't know a whole ton about horses myself, but I thought it was pretty cool that we were able to get this much new information from their genetics. Anywho, remember Adiocetus Weltoni? Yeah, me neither. Okay, but just hear me out, this is pretty rad. In a new study on the prehistoric whale, they found holes and grooves on the roof of the animal's mouth that internally connect with a vascular canal, which is very similar to blood vessel patterns in modern day baleen whales. And since Adiocetus is an evolutionary cousin of today's Mysticetes, or baleen whales, it's most likely that this ancient cetacean sported both baleen and teeth within its jaws, which is pretty wicked. The study provides substantial evidence of a major shift in feeding behavior in these animals, from a more typical carnivorous diet to bulk filter feeding mode. And hey yo Edge, if you ever decide to make a video on this lad, I have the perfect tagline for you: The toothbrush that bites back. Eh, never mind, whatever, I'll show myself out. Anyway, the first complete egg of an extinct King Island dwarf emu was found. Islands off Australia's coast were once home to three subspecies of the mainland's emu. Sadly, all three of these variants are now extinct, with the King Island being wiped from their island by 1805, with a captive pair in Paris surviving until 1822, the Kangaroo Island variant survived until about 1830, and the Tasmanian until about 1850. We don't know a crazy amount about these birds considering how recently they went extinct, and only a few museum specimens exist worldwide. The first complete egg of the Dwarf King Island emu was found on King Island with a skeleton of the animal, and what's most surprising is while King Island emus were nearly half the size of the mainland emu, the egg was of similar size linearly, but less so in mass volume and with a slightly thinner shell. This is an overall very interesting find that helps us learn more about these fascinating island birds that left our planet not too long ago. And our final new discovery for May 2021 is the one you most likely heard of out of this batch. 
Introducing the new Lambiosaurian Hadrosaur, Tlatolophus galorum. Unearthed in northern Mexico in the 2000s and publicly described just this year, Tlatolophus is the most complete Lambiosaurian found in the entire country. The remains include an exceptionally well-preserved skull, complete with the unique head crest the animal sported about 73 million years ago during the Campanian of the late Cretaceous. While the remains are still being further studied, this is still an amazing discovery for Mexico, and another great example of hadrosaurid head crest diversity. Well, that does it for me and for May 2021. Big thanks again to Edge for having me aboard for this event once again. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Rewind as we move on into June.